Hey guys, welcome back to the Q with Q. This is so crazy because I literally already dropped a podcast for the day. Um, It was talking about the black teen that was arrested for not doing her homework. But I felt like I wanted to come back and talk about something else. And it is so crazy because I'm actually recording this podcast in my car. (laughs) I am recording while I am driving on my way to get me something to eat. But something else came across my mind, and we kind of talked about it a little bit um, the other day as far as Biden's VP. It's still driving me up a wall, and I think I've actually just decided on who I want. Um, And I've been wanting this person since the beginning. Y'all know if you've been rocking long enough, you know who it is. And that's Elizabeth Warren. Like, let's stop playing, people. (laughs) Let's stop playing. Joe Biden needs to choose Elizabeth Warren, and I'm going to tell you why. You know I'm going to tell you why. One... Elizabeth Warren speaks for the progressive policy. I mean, for the progressive wing of, I guess you could say, the Democratic Party or even people who don't subscribe themselves to being a Democrat. And I talked about this a long time ago on my Instagram when it came down to a Bernie um, or an Elizabeth Warren supporter, because a lot of the policies are exactly the same in a lot of different ways. Right. But the person was different and the thing that i like about elizabeth warren over bernie even though i was a bernie bro in 2016 is i felt like elizabeth warren would be able to work with different coalitions she's able to work with different people on different things not to say that bernie isn't but bernie is kind of take it or leave it um and i've just seen Elizabeth Warren be able to maneuver in such a way to where she can get her stuff done, compromise, don't compromise her values, but understand like in any negotiation, like everybody is not going to get everything that they want um, in any good one, at least. And so I think like I just like Elizabeth Warren. I'm all in for her policies. I'm all in for the eradication of student loan debt. I'm all in for, you know, um, working on climate change, even though I myself, I may not know all the different intrinsic uh, uh, or or all the different um, aspects to what we could do to really combat climate change. But I do know that fossil fuels are harming the climate and harming the ozone, right? And if we can invest in resources to create green jobs and utilize resources like the sun and the wind and still, you know, get our electricity and still get the things that we need to do without burning fossil fuels and causing more harm to the planet, then why wouldn't we be all for that? And so like, I like that she's, you know, one that fights for that. I like that she she sis seems to get it especially when we talk about racial equality and equity like sis gets it if y'all hear the the, the ticket that's the blinker in the car i told you i'm driving uh <laughs> baby gotta make a hard left real quick um but she gets it about racial justice you know I, if we're starting to look at the polls or even if we look at her old polls like black women were going towards elizabeth warren as well um and even when we look right now like people are getting more comfortable with the idea that she understands even though she is very much a blue eye blonde hair white woman right and some might look at her and be like mm, i don't know sis just purely based off of looks like let's just be all the way real with it but she gets it even though she stands in that space of a white woman sis gets it and so i think that's a that's a that's a benefit as well now obviously a black woman who has lived this experience would get it in a completely different way but again i'm talking about the person that i believe uh shares the policy values that i want to see enacted um even her plans for education and like outside of student loan debt you know her plans for uh access to pre-k for all children good quality education you know from k through 12 uh, salary raises for teachers. Baby, we on this COVID-19 and I know people with churn have a higher appreciation for teachers. Like, I know they do. Side note, if you're just listening to this podcast for the first time, I know the correct way to say that is children, but for comedic effect, comedic effect, I say churn here. Yeah? Okay, now let's get back into it. Um, but she understands that. She was once a, 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 a teacher herself. So she gets um the strain and and the struggle in being a teacher and the sacrifice really of being a teacher that is a profession of sacrifice uh to to stand in the gap and say you know i'm going to educate the youth on x y and the z and to be with them eight 
nine hours a day. Like, baby, this is, I, I can't do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I thought about being a teacher a couple of times because uh, I think I'd be a good influence. But them cheering to drive me up a wall. If you listen to, <laughs> if you listen to the previous podcast, you know, I told y'all that I used to work um, in the juvenile detention center uh, slash juvenile mental health center. And them kids, t- them, baby, them kids drove me up a wall. So I, ca- I can't be a teacher. I was only there, I think, for four months. I was like, this is not for me. And that is okay. <laughs> that is okay. So she gets, you know, the sacrifice and the struggle and the joy of being a teacher. Um, I think she understands foreign policy as well. And I know she would definitely stand up to Putin. She'd be ready to nuck if you buck. Okay, well, we know Joe Biden will be ready to nuck if you buck too even though we're trying to be nonviolent, but you just can't be putting bounties on American soldiers' heads. Like, that's just not, that's just not going to rock. Like, we're not doing that. Um, and I think she would be a good compliment to him. And I think it would be a very uh, complimentary ticket because Joe Biden is a moderate. Now, I don't know how you could be a Democrat and be a moderate, but for whatever, whatever, he's a moderate. Um, she's a progressive. And so now, like I said in the beginning, you're tying those two things um, together. And I think she would be able to push Joe Biden on some issues um, to get him to to a more progressive, a more progressive stance, uh, which I kind of see him already moving that way. But I think she would really push that. I think that she would also stand her ground to Joe Biden in the sense, not try to overrun him, but like if she thinks something is the right thing to do. I think that she would stand in that and make that known while still supporting him, right? I'm not talking about, you know, out in public. Obviously, they have to be a united front, whoever he chooses. They would have to be a united front when they come to the public. But I think behind closed doors, she wouldn't cower back, you know, and not stand in what she thinks. And that's not a slight to any of the other female candidates. And I'm not saying that any of them would. I'm just trying to make the case for for the one I want, okay? I don't think that she would do that. Um... And yeah, I just think she's an all around great candidate. She's fun. uh, She's educated. She has a way of explaining things. That's one thing that really brought me to her when she would explain these policies. She really does take that teacher education and bring that thing on full circle. And so she has a way of explaining things that is easily relatable and helps you understand what's going on. And in our time of politics, I feel like so many people have been outside of politics because they don't understand what's happening and that's part of the reason why I do what I do like I already love it but I do what I do because I know people need this information communicated to them in a way that is easily digestible that you can then take it and run with it and make educated decisions and I think sis does that as well and so I mean there are so many other great qualities about her but those are the ones that just come to mind as I'm sitting here driving to go get my food you know go get my ticks mix and I just wanted to make another podcast to say like I think I've actually decided now again Joe Biden is gonna have to choose who he chooses and any of those women that are that's on that list you know are qualified um but I also think you know the person has to be ready to step into the job right the vice president is a heartbeat away from the presidency if something should happen to the president and so Elizabeth Warren has been a senator. Well, she's been a teacher. She's been a senator. She's been there for, you know, quite some time. She's been on the on the presidential stage. So, you know, we know she can she can rough and tough in, in a debate. I love to see her take uh uh what's that man name over there? Pence down on the debate stage. I would love to, because you know Pence can't debate. You know, baby, if she ether Pence like she did Bloomberg, baby, baby, okay. You talk about political drama, that's what it is. So I I, I would love to see that. I mean, and, and, and the debate is only a small thing, but I would love to see that. I think she'd be great on the debate stage. I think that she could absolutely do the job if something should happen to the president as the vice president does. Even being the tiebreaker, you know, in the Senate, um, I think. Well, I know she would be able to do that. Like she's she's in the Senate right now as a senator. So she knows how the Senate operates. She'd be able to coalition bill as the president and the administ- the, the new administration comes up with uh, policies that they want to push forward. You know, she still has those connections, still has those relationships. So um, I would love to see her in there. And even her work with the sorry, just to go back, even her work with the uh, consumer uh, financial bureau, like sis was all in that advocating that we not get screwed over by big business. We the people. 
So all in all, I think Elizabeth Warren is an awesome candidate. And I'm just going to head and say that that is who I want Joe Biden to choose. And that's on period. Okay. Anyway, y'all, this has been another episode of The Q with Q today on a Sunday. Maybe I dropped two episodes today. I don't know. I may drop a third. Who knows? But I appreciate you all for listening. I appreciate you all for uh, following my Instagram at The Q with Q, following me on TikTok at Quentin Giles. And until next time, friends, y'all be safe and just get ready to vote.